well. I appreciate you stopping by and checking out this wonderful bird. Look at this beauty of a bird. You know what? That bird looks like one of those, um, what are they called? Uh, Quetzal. Um, you know, they have a lot of color. They live in the tropics. Anyway, uh, you know what? And he's perched so nicely right there on our page. You know, I think I'm going to like this guy. Unlike all the other feature animals of the day that seem to mock me. This guy, I think, is going to be my friend. Anyway, Mr. Wara, let's get focused. Let's do our lesson. This is, by the way, Chapter 4, Review for the Test. It is review video number two. And here we go. I see Trevor up here is reading a book for a book report. Last week, he read 35 pages of the book. This week... He read two and a half times as many pages as he read last week. How many pages of the book has Trevor read this week? Show your work. All right, I'm liking it. Well, a couple things to look at. First of all, we need to look at basically how many pages he read last week. We're comparing that amount with the amount that he's reading this week. And the fact that they tell us how many pages he read last week helps us figure out how many pages he read this week. It's not asking us how many pages he read altogether. Okay, it's not asking us that, but it's just saying how many pages of the book has Trevor read this week. So we need to use these two numbers. Well, you may have recalled that when we did an earlier lesson, when we talked about multiplying a number, there's an important property called the identity property of multiplication. This property says if you multiply any number by one, that it results in that number. So by looking at 2.5 times should give you a clue right away that we're not going to end up with 35 because if it was just one time or one times, I guess you would say, then we would just end up with 35. But because it's two and a half times, that's letting us know their number is going to be a lot larger than 35. So why am I mentioning this? I'm only mentioning this because it's important for us to see how numbers may turn out as a way of making that estimation understanding. When we kind of get that concept and get our mind working on that, sometimes it'll make it more understandable what numbers do and so forth. Now we don't need, it doesn't say anything about doing a model or anything like that, so we're just going to do the algorithm straight through. So first of all, we have those 35 pages. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and write, he read 35 pages last week and he read two and a half times so we're going to go ahead and multiply through. Now our decimal here is, is not important right now. We're just going to focus on the digits only. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. Now we have 15 plus 2 is 17. Now I'm going to put in my placeholder. Yep. I don't know where I got that little thing from. But now we move into our 10s. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry our 1. And now we have 6 and we have 7. And these actually, in essence, we were doing an area model in a previous video. These here become our partial products because that's really what they are. Uh, now we have 5, we have 7, we have 8. We have 875. This is the reason why I think it's important for us to think about numbers. So 875 doesn't sound reasonable when we think that 35 pages... If you were to multiply that by 2, that would be double. That would give us 70. And you can see how far off our number is. And we should do this every time we complete a math problem. It's not just accept and go, okay, I got the answer. Here you go, Mr. War. Can I go out to recess? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think so. No, instead, you're going to double check and say, no, that answer does not seem reasonable. I have a power of 10 that I need to, to pull out. Whether you see, see this is multiplying, um, I, I see this as multiplying by 10. That's what gets that decimal out. So this is like times 10. And then I come down here and I'm going to divide by 10 to get that decimal back in. So we have 87.5 pages. And remember, this was just in this week. And that's what the problem was asking. It's saying, show your work. We did that. All right. So pff, let's move on. Yeah, let's keep her going. Keep her steady. Keep it steady. There we go. Oh, goodbye, bird. All right. It says Jonah drives his car to and from work. The total length of the trip to and from work is 19.2 miles. In August, Jonah worked 21 days. How many miles in all ooh, I love those. did Jonah drive to and from work that month? Show your work. 
I like this. So we can just do the algorithm so we don't have to worry about doing area models and all that kind of stuff. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, as you can see, the first sentence just tells us that he's driving back and forth. Not important. I'm looking for that pertinent information, that information from the word problem that is going to help me. Here it says the total length of the trip to and from work is 19.2 miles. That's important. And it says in August, Jonah worked 21 days. This is important because if we're going to answer the question, it says how many miles in all did Jonah drive to and from work that month, then we're going to need that mileage and then, and that's per day, and then we're going to need the 21 days. So we're going to go ahead and set our problem up. Let's go ahead and put our 19.2. We're going to multiply that by the 21 days. Again, decimal, not concerned with you. Just line up my digits. Two. Now I have nine, one. Good old identity property. Placeholder. Okay. I just cannot do that, you know? I love doing that. All right. I don't know. I'm just, hey, Mr. Wara, calm down. Calm down. Okay, we have four. And then we have 18. And I carry my one. I get two. And then I add that one up there and I get three. Now I have my partial products that I need to add together. So I have two. I have 13. Carry my one. Nine, ten. Carry my one and four. So I end up with 4,032. Does that seem reasonable? 4,000 miles? Mm, seems kind of high. If you're doing about 20 miles, and this is our little estimation, I'm going to show this work, because I have 20 times, and there's about 20 days. Remember back in the days when we did that? Four. My answer should be around 400. All right, that's not even close. Oh, I know. I heard you. I heard somebody screaming into the video. Yeah, Mr. Warren, the decimal place. Okay. So we have the decimal place, so we need to multiply by 10, divide by 10. So I'm going to put my decimal place right in there. So, and how many miles in all did Jonah drive to and from work that month? That would be, if we write our whole written statement like we used to do, Jonah drove 403.2 miles in, what was the month? August. There's our answer. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, I love this job. Okay, you guys, now we have number 11. Write each number in a box next to the expression that has the same value. I like that they use this word a lot, same value. Kind of like what it's worth. It's an important word to know in math. A number maybe used more than once. Yeah, I guess we'll have to. Since we have three, since we have three tiles here and there's four boxes, that's kind of easy math right there. I reckon I'm going to have to use one more than once. That's what I'm thinking. So 20 times 31. Now the beauty about this one here, there aren't any decimal points. So think about this for a second. This is, eh, I don't want to say that it's cheating, you guys, but you need to think smart when it comes about math. See, 29, 29 times 31, we could actually figure that out. But think about it. That's 30 times about 30, all right? And that's really easy, right? We do the simple facts and we put our powers of 10, we end up with 900. Doesn't that let you know that it has to be that one? It can't be any of the others. I could multiply that all the way through if you guys need practice with the algorithm. But I'm gonna skip that, assuming that I'm gonna be doing enough of that already that you're going to, to see if you need extra help with that. But this is thinking smart. This is thinking about numbers. Now here we have a decimal point that changes the game, sort of. When you think about it, well, if we have one decimal place here, isn't this, again, you could still say, well, this is about 30 times 3. What's, what's 30 times 3? Yeah, it's 90. Right? And what number is the closest? It has to be 89.9. It can't be it. And the other thing we learned, you may have recall, is that this has one decimal place. Well, that means that that answer has, that product has to have one decimal place. Yeah, hey, hey, are we learning? Okay. And then here we have two decimal places. Think about it. There you go, right? This isn't even one. You have like 30 times something less than one. And it's 30, well, let's round that to 0.3. You almost have to do that, All right? We're still going to get nine, right? We do have a power of 10 there. And then you have one decimal point. We need to make sure that you put there. And there it is right there, about 9. Oh, isn't this fun? 2.9 times 31. Now we have about 3. Let's say 3 times 30. Did we have that one? 3 times 30? We did. It's about 90. Has one decimal place? Yeah, 89.9. That works. 
They're trying to fool us, these two right here. What did they do? Here they put the decimal place in this factor, and here they put the decimal place in that factor. Isn't that easy? I mean, doesn't that just make you want to go, that was easy? It really does. That's why I love math, you guys. It's concrete. It doesn't lie to you. Math, the numbers, they're always so true. They're like true blue friends. Anyway, Melinda. Zachary and Heather went to the mall to shop for school supplies. Melinda spent $14.25 on her supplies. Zachary spent $2.30 more than, ooh, I love these keywords, more than Melinda spent. Heather spent two times as much money as Zachary spent. How much did Heather spend on school supplies? Now, notice how I underlined those words, and this is really, really important when it comes to math in understanding word problems. In this case, it's important for us to know what they mean. When we say more than, that operation, you should be thinking addition, right? And whenever you hear that two times, it's almost written exactly how you would. It, it means two times. There's nothing tricky about that. So let's go ahead and show some of our work here. We have $14.25. So we need to figure out what Zachary spent first, then we can move to Heather. I think that makes sense. So Zachary spent $2.30 more. So let's add those numbers together. Now remember the decimal point? Yeah. Bring it on down. Bring it to my, straight on down. Decimals, and when you add and subtract, bring it straight on down. Then we have six, and then we have one. Does so my answer seem reasonable? Yeah, that's about $2 more than that. I say yes. So I'm going to say Zachary spent $16.55. All right. Now I'm going to come over here with a, a Heather. She spent two times as much as Zachary. Well, if Zachary spent $16.55. I just need to double those numbers. And that's what I'm going to do. Multiply by two. 10, 11, carry the one. I have 12, 13, carry the one, two, and then I have three. Now I have two decimal places that need to be moved out. Put those two decimal places in. Ooh, kind of sloppy. I end up with $33.10. At least that's what I'm getting. So I'm getting $33.10. I'm going to put my $33.10. And that, my friends, is how much money Heather spent on her school supplies. Yes. Cool. Let's keep cruising. Next question. Bring it on down. The cost of admission. To the Baytown Zoo is $10.50 for each senior citizen, $15.75 for each adult, and of course, children, they get in for $8.25. Isn't that nice? Okay. Now, it says a family of two adults and one child plan to spend the day at the Baytown Zoo. How much does admission for the family cost? Explain how you found your answer. All righty then. Well, first things first is I have two adults and one child. I know how much the adult tickets are. They're listed right here. And I know how much the child is. I have two adults and I have one child. Well, it looks like I'm going to need to add the adult here twice and the child once to get my cost. I could add 1575, 1575, but I'm going to go ahead and multiply. All right. Now, I actually could do this one in my head. Let me just, well, we'll do the problem for the multiplication purpose, but think of it in this way. 75 cents double is $1.50. 15 double is 30, because we're just multiplying. When we add those two together, we get 31.50. Now, we'll go ahead and do it over here, but these are some of the ways that, you know, you might want to speed up. But then the math test, so you don't want to hurry, okay? I'm not telling you, oh, yeah, yeah, do it that way. But I'm getting you to look at numbers and think about numbers. Always take your time. When you take it in tasks, oh my goodness, I would be so careful. That's just, and then you see I have my two decimal places. I do end up with 3150. Now I'm going to add my $8.25 onto that because that's the child. Uh oh, decimal place. Bring it on straight down. And I forgot to carry my one. Oh no, there's no one. I'm not multiplying. Ooh, I'm adding. Ooh, Mr. War caught himself in a mistake. Let's erase that. There we go. Now we're back on track. And now we have, here we have nine. And that's all. And then three. So we should have $39.75. Okay. That's probably happens when I'm talking at the same time I'm doing my work. My brain doesn't work so well, that whole multitasking. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and type this in for you. And there you go. There's my explanation, which I described above. Well, let's look at part B. Describe another way you could solve the problem. Uh, good question. 
Well, I suppose I, I suppose rather than multiplying, you all take it by two. I could have added um, the 1575 twice, right? Added 1575 plus $15.75 and plus $8.25. Do it that way. Okay, part C. What if two more tickets for admission are purchased if the two additional tickets cost $16.50? Determine what type of tickets the family purchases. Oh, I like this. Explain how you can determine the answer without calculating. All right, let me just kind of think of this out loud. Well, I already have the prices here. I, I don't recall what the uh, adult was. Let's look at that. I'm not the adult, I'm sorry. The senior was 1050. What if two more tickets for admission are purchased? If two, if the two additional tickets cost 1650, determine what type of tickets the family purchases. Oh, I'm thinking right away now, yeah. I'm thinking two more children tickets are purchased because eight dollars and eight dollars remember we did that doubling is 16 doubling the 25 is 50 therefore two more additional children tickets were purchased how can you determine the answer without calculating well I kind of explained to you how I found the doubling I already knew that one amount I just had to add two more tickets basically so let me go ahead and write that response in it says at a tailor shop, it costs $6.79 to shorten a pair of pants and four times as much to mend a dress. Choose the answer that correctly completes the statement. So it would cost Lisa that amount to shorten one pair of pants and mend one dress. It does say to shorten one pair of pants, which we know is that amount. So we know that it it's about $7, and then men one dress, which is about four times that. Could we make this a calculated guess? I think so. If that's about seven, and then to mend a dress is gonna be four times as much, what's seven? Maybe I should write this down so it makes more sense for you guys. We have $7, about I'm estimating, times four is $28, but that's just for one dress is gonna be 28. We need to add on another seven, right? Because we're going to have seven times four. One pair of pants to shorten is seven dollars. So let's start our little seven dollars. Now to mend a dress is four times that amount, which we know is twenty-eight dollars. So we need to add on that for each one. See now we have thirty-five. Do you see how this has to be the correct answer? Did all that make sense? I hope so. Now what you could do. Just so you can see my work, you could take the six dollars and seventy-five cents. I'm not seventy-five, seventy-nine. Okay, guys. Okay, you didn't see anything. <laughs> okay, six dollars and seventy-nine cents. All right, and now you're gonna add on. Okay, we're gonna take that six dollars and seventy-nine cents. This is just kind of checking our work, I suppose. Let's multiply. This is money. All right, thirty-six. Okay, when you multiply that through, you get $27.16. You can see we, we get that exact amount. What I was trying to get you to think of is, again, trying to do math a little bit more uh, efficiently, thinking about numbers rather than, and this is why when you guys are learning about estimation, why you learn about that, because it's a quick way to solve problems, get yourself uh, in uh, the ballpark, what you're looking for, certain numbers. Sometimes you want the exact answer. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we just want an estimation. Okay, my friends, enough jabbering from Mr. Wara here. It is the end of another math video. Oh, all the energy is lost. But you know something? These videos seem to keep coming. All right, so put the tissue away. Stand up straight. <laughs> you know what, you guys? And live long and prosper.